One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Okay, here's our project for today. We're going to be painting Starmane the Unicorn here from Reaper Miniatures. And this particular one is the new Bones USA one. And you can get this in either Bones USA or in Pewter uh, from Reaper. You can order it directly from their website. Uh, and there will be a link in the description below so that you can find these figures. So yeah, today we're going to do Starmane. This is the first time we've done a figure like that in our paint-along. I'm looking forward to it. I'm feeling kind of more creative than usual since I'm going to get to paint a unicorn. I think the first time I ever painted a unicorn was like eight years ago. And I got to paint it for about five minutes till my daughter saw it and took it away and she painted the rest. So I'm looking forward to this. I've done lots of horses, but not so many unicorns. So the objective today, I'm going to do a dapple gray unicorn. And we're going to do the light source as though the light is pointing directly down from just in front of the figure. If you see the base, there's a bit of a highlight there. It shows you where the light direction is going to be. Basically... Near, nearly directly above, but slightly to the front. What that's going to do for us is give us a nice, brightly lit face. It's also going to let us do an interesting looking shiny highlight on the unicorn horn. And to make it very obvious where the light, where the highlight should be, where the shadows should be. The reason I chose dapple gray is because it's basically all dots. And if you're comfortable, you can do dashed lines to make it look like the horse has a fur texture. Or we can just do dots to build up the highlights. And mostly this is going to be about building up uh, the highlights as opposed to making things smoothly blended. But we will do a bit of a glaze uh, partway through to smooth out uh, the dots to make them look less harsh. And uh, that's the plan. And we want them to look a bit magical. So I'm also going to do some purple, blue, and uh, magenta colors in the in the dapple dots to make them look pretty fancy so that's the the general idea for the day now the colors that i'm going to be using so there's our mini star main colors i'm going to use the main color is going to be white overall like light gray so i'm going to be starting out by highlighting with stone gray And then I'm going to highlight that with weathered stone, creamy ivory, and finally dragon, sorry, uh, solid white will be the, the highest highlights on that. And then to deepen the shadows in the white, I'm going to use shadowed stone as my shadow color. And then in the middle of all of that, I'm going to use a bit of dragon black where I need it. For example, to do the base coat on the main going to have a very dark colored mane and we're going to also use Reaper Pale Violet Red 9027 Pale Violet Red 9422 Night Sky Indigo 9024 Amethyst Purple and 9078 Surf Aqua we'll use colors like that to add some more dots and colors in on the um, on his coat to make him look magical. This is my plan. Uh, the weather conditions here in Halifax are very cold and dry today. It's about minus 12 Celsius out there. The wind chills are somewhat lower. So um, things are drying out in the studio very fast. I just put my palette paper in and it's already, uh, the edge of it has already gone dry and lifted out of the water. So I am gonna be using a bit of uh, Flow Aid so this is Liquitex 
flow aid as a flow improver. Just a little bit of it um, to uh, slow the drying time a little bit. So that is the plan. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build up our palette with the main colors we're going to use for the body of Starmane here. So I'm going to start by putting my main colors in a line just across the top of the palette. So I'm going to start with Shadowed Stone as my shadow color. I'll need a fair bit of stone gray. Then it's Weathered Stone, Creamy Ivory, probably more Weathered Stone than that. And then Dragon White. No, Solid White, Solid White, doesn't matter. You don't have to use the same colors as I do. The key thing is, that uh, the colors each um, are lighter as you go from uh, left to right. So the darkest color on the left, darkest color on the left, lightest color on the right. And that's in terms of their value. If you were to make this a black and white screen, you would see that this is the darkest color, this is the lightest color. And so we're going to build up our highlights, even though the colors are a little bit different. This is kind of a neutral gray. This one's a bit warmer. This is a, a warm off white, and this is a cold white. We're still getting lighter from right to left, and that's going to make our highlights uh, stand up. Then the other thing we're going to do is we will glaze in. The purple is going to be glazed in somewhere about um, in between the shadow gray, or the, the shadow stone and the stone gray, because that's about the same value as a shattered stone, shadowed stone. The amethyst purple is very close to the weathered stone in terms of its value. Might be a little bit darker, so we're going to glaze that in around there. The magenta is the same. So we're going to choose to put the magenta glazes near the amethyst. And then finally we've got that little bit of surf aqua that I'm going to use. I haven't decided where I'm going to put that. I might put this under his chin. I might put this under his, um, like along, just, just some, hide some dots in the shadow side. So I'm going to put this down here by the um, Night Sky Indigo. So these are the, the, the fancy colors we're going to just add in as different dots at different times to create our fancy magical looking unicorn. And just so I don't forget where it is, I'm going to put my drops of Flow Improver on the far right so I know where they are in my palette. And that makes lower chance that I'm going to make a mistake. <laughs> Treat it as though it's water or, or whatever. And I feel like I'm going to need some black, so I'm just going to drop that on the palette now at the left side. So the top line, dark to light for Painted the Unicorn. And these glaze are going to be used as glazes in between these colors to uh, add some... I don't know, visual interest to the guy. That's the plan anyway. Okay, so now let's just dive right in. Let's get back into the proper view. Let's adjust the, the focus on the figure. My plan is to just kind of hold him like that. So we need to bring this forward just a bit to get good light on him. There we go. And let's check the focus. It looks pretty good. All right. All good. Right on. For the people that are watching on Twitch, if you're interested, you can always join us in the um, Discord channel. On the Discord channel, um, you can ask questions and uh, if you're painting along you can take a photo of your mini drop it in there and I'll give you some feedback as we go as well 
time to start painting. What brush do I want here? I want something small. Uh, let's start with the size two for now and see how we do. So I'm going to start by preparing some of this uh, stone gray color. I'm going to start marking out the first highlights with the stone gray. And this is really too dark a color for this, but it's going to give a good foundation to make the white look good later on. So again, light coming from directly above, kind of just in front of the, the unicorn horn this way, just a little bit above the angle of the unicorn horn. So in most cases, the highlight that we're going to get is going to be quite wide. So if you think about the unicorn horn as a cylinder, the color is going to come down. Basically, our brightest highlight is going to come almost all the way down the side of the cylinder. So I'm going to start by painting really the top half of the cylinder this color. This is the, the stone gray. And one of the things we'll do later on is we're going to position the, the bright white, solid white highlights on that in such a way as they're going to make it look like the, the, the horn is shiny. Okay, I'm working my way back now. Light again coming, if just picture as being slightly above the angle of the horn, like that. 90 degrees out from his face. And that gives you a sense of where the highlight should be. So we'll start right on the top of his head. And I'm just kind of dabbing the paint on there. Not too concerned about it being smooth or anything like that right now. I'm just laying in the first uh, layer of color. Now this is drying out already. Add a little bit of thinner in there. The problem you run into doing um, a paint style like this, where it's all going to be basically dots, is if you thin the paint too much with water, every dot as it dries is going to have coffee stain. The other thing is that when there's water in the paint, you might find that it's hard to keep the dots relatively small. And you end up basically flooding the mini every time you put a dot on. So try to keep the amount of water that you put in to thin your paint uh, relatively low, and that's going to help make this uh, color scheme work reasonably well. So I'm just dabbing on dots of paint, and these are going to be quite big at the start. We'll get smaller as we go, and I'm working really towards the light source. So the same way as half of that uh, horn was painted this color, that's giving me kind of a guide as to how much should be in shadow, and the shadow should be just a bit smaller overall than this layer. So anywhere that this uh, is going to get light hitting it directly is pretty much going to be be covered with this color. So like when you look at the, the leg, the light coming down, I'm going to paint the whole top of the leg this color close down to his hooves. And I'm going to leave the underside of his leg about 40% unpainted. So the whole shadow underneath unpainted. Now if you make a lot of straight lines to do this, you're going to end up with a, a fur texture that looks a bit odd. So if you're deciding to go with the line method, you want to make sure that the lines that you put on to create your highlights, even from this very early stage, follow the flow direction of his fur. So his fur basically would curl around his neck, come down his neck this way, they're going to, it's going to point down the legs like that towards the hoof. And then on his body back here, you can kind of choose which way you want it to go. But to keep with the overall look of the model, basically you want it about 45 degrees towards the back. Okay, so it's almost vertically down. And then when you come down the leg, it would come this way. That's if you decide you want to try to create a fur texture. And you would start doing that right from the earliest stage. If you're just going to do dots, it's not so significant. We just want to try to preserve most of, not most of, we want to preserve at least some of the shadow. 
And again, that's why we've got the shadow gray. If we do get rid of too much shadow, we can always go back and add some more in with our shadow gray. So we're doing dappled dots to build up the initial highlights. Sorry, this is not the highlights. This is the base coat. We're creating an irregular base coat out of dots. Fairly big, just dots. We want to avoid creating a really, really regular pattern. So we don't want to have the dots all going in the same way like that. That's going to start to look like a like a, a leopard spot pattern or something like that. You want it to be quite irregular. If you ever look at photos of dapple gray horses, sometimes there are places where the pattern is very regular, but a lot of it is quite, I mean, it looks organic. It's quite irregular. It's not like zebra stripes or something like that. It tends to be quite irregular. So we don't want to be creating the same size and shape of dot with every brush stroke. You want to make it uh, varied. So one of the ways to do that is just keep rotating the brush in your hand so that the shape of the tip changes. And that'll help break up the, the symmetry of those dots. And also change the angle of your brush, change the angle of the mini, change it lots, and that'll help break up the symmetry of the dots. We do want this to be a bit irregular. So there's the front half basically done. With our first color, maybe a little bit more up in there. And then flip them around and do the other side, exactly the same way. Do his nose, right up above his eyes, most of his face. So now the angle of the light coming the other way, right? Basically straight down on his forehead. So the shadow position is opposite, but about the same size as on the other side of the horse of the uh, the unicorn. And I, I chose to do that so that we would have symmetry between left and right. It's going to look very dramatic, like he's charging into the light, maybe kind of charging out of the woods into the light source. And uh, yeah. So we definitely want to have him much brighter much lighter towards the light. And we'll put the color, all those, um, like the aqua and the magenta and all that, is going to be in the zone in between the brightest highlights and the shadow. So that the color doesn't really overwhelm the whole look of the figure. Dapple gray. So there's a lot of technical things to think about if you're painting an actual horse that we can kind of cheat and forget about when we're painting a unicorn because it's a magical, mystical creature. It doesn't have to follow the usual rules for painting horses in some ways. For example, this unicorn has cloven hoofs, which horses do not. That's a, uh, you know, a fantastical made up thing. Uh, so the rules about things like the color of a horse's mane, the color of a horse's hooves, we don't have to follow those rules. Uh, typically, a horse's hooves are very similar color to the the color of its legs above the hoof. So if the hoof, sorry, if the leg above the hoof is black, the hoof is going to be nearly black. Uh, if the leg above the hoof is white, then the hoof is going to be very pale colored, very light colored. If it's brown, the hoof will be brown. If it's multicolor, has streaks in it. The hoof is going to look very similar to that. But the mane, horse's manes tend to be black unless the horse is white. And if the horse is white, it can get sometimes a black mane, but quite often a light gray, something like that. 
Okay. Um, and that there's, I mean, you can go and Google horse colors schemes, horse natural horse colors, and you'll find all kinds of charts that show you what the natural horse color scheme looks like. Um, but when we're painting something like this, we don't have to follow that. We can paint it however we like because it's magic. So my plan for the horse's mane, or for the unicorn's mane here, is to start with black, and then I'm going to lighten it up using uh, some night sky indigo, and then go back into the, uh, the grays. So by the time we're done, it's going to have a black and indigo base, but it's going to be lightened up to the same colors we're going to use for highlighting the horse in other places. That's the plan. We'll see how it looks. We might amend it later. So the next step, I'm going to be doing a base coat of black on the horse's, sorry, I keep saying horse, and I mean unicorn, the unicorn's mane. Mane and tail are going to be black now. And our unicorn is going to have wild and crazy fantasy colors. If you're following along on Twitch or on the Discord, you're welcome to ask questions. I'm happy to uh, answer questions either specifically about this paint job or about painting in general or any other questions you might have related to uh, miniature painting, taking miniature painting classes, uh, whatever it might be. Generally staying within the topic of miniature painting. So this is my first coat of black on the tail. And I'm probably going to do two coats. We'll see how I feel about it once I get the main done. So why am I painting the main so early on when I've barely started painting the body? Well, at this stage, I've got a sense of where my highlights and shadows are likely to be based on that first round of base color. And if I were to make a mistake with this black now and put some black into the area like I just did on purpose right there that I want to be highlighted, when I keep going forward doing the, the dots, the dappled dots, um, I'll be able to correct mistakes I've made with the main, um, which would be harder to correct later on. So I've got a sense of where the highlights are now. And now I'm going to put the color in on the main and be less concerned about making mistakes later on. So I have thinned this paint a fair bit. Uh, it's probably half paint, no, two thirds paint, one third water at this point. And that's just so that it flows easily down into the uh, the sculpted texture of the hair on the mane and the tail. It makes it flow a little bit easier. Um, this has quite a deep sculpted texture. This is uh, a Sandra Garrity sculpt. It's a few years old, this sculpt now. I quite like the way she sculpts these uh, this hair. It's a really good texture for doing things like um, washes. So you would give it a lighter base coat and then use a dark wash on it to give it some additional depth. And what we might do is after I've painted the mane and the tail, that indigo color, if we felt it was too light, you could always come back and do a wash of black or something over that. And that would push that color back down or make it less bright, I guess what I'm trying to say. There we go, and he's got this fancy forelock, which is going to be black. And we got to give him a black beard, too. That's just the way I feel about it right now. A little bit of a black beard. We could do black fur on his hooves as well, but I think that's going to probably end up being dark gray is the way I'd rather go on that. The stone gray color. There we go. And we need that to have time to dry. 
Okay, there we go. Black mane. I also want to do black eyes. So I need a smaller brush. Where's a nice small brush? There we go. I got too many brushes on the table today. <laughs> like I got 20 too many brushes on the table today. Okay, let's just keep a couple of these. Let's get rid of the rest. Uh, oh, I've been using that Sem brush a lot lately. I like that one. And size one, Windsor Newton's been doing well for me lately. And I'll just get rid of everything else. Move them out of the way. All right, so where's that size zero? There's a size zero. I'm going to paint the eye socket black. The um, iris and pupil of a horse is quite large. Very little of the white of their eye shows. So we're going to make, we'll do that by uh, what uh, is quite often called the two-step eye, but basically it's one step with the iris, and then the second step is going to be painting a little bit of a white, and uh, you might do a reflection dot if, the, if it looks right at the time, but essentially that's going to be it for the eyes on this horse. Put a little bit of dark in the nostrils, give them a shadow. There we go. That's where I want to be right now. So we've done one set of dots gray on the body. We've done one round of black on the tail and mane. And we've painted the uh, eyes black. Next step. I'm going to go and get my larger brush again. So that's size two. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep making lots more dots. We're going to start putting dots on. So we're going to make a half step between the stone gray and the weathered stone. And we're going to slowly build up to our lightest colors, a half step at a time. So the first half step is going to be stone gray, 50-50 with weathered stone. Then we'll just do straight weathered stone. Then we'll do weathered stone half and half with the ivory, just ivory, and then ivory half and half with white. And that'll probably be as light as we go. He's going to look really, really light colored at that point. We'll probably go back and do the glazes then, put some additional color in, and then finally go back to doing um, the, the lightest dots, maybe with a bit of pure white at the end. Okay, so I'm going to start in the same place each time. I'm going to start on the horn and work my way down the body. This color is lighter than the stone gray. So I'm going to make each of these highlights still quite large, but smaller than the ones I already did. So these highlights need to be smaller than the ones that we already did. So I'm going to start on the horn. Now, you might think to yourself that the, light, the highlight on the horn should be straight on the top, straight towards the light. It's actually not what we want. We want the, the highlight to be just a little bit off from the top. I'm going to do one highlight on this side. Just the focus just a bit. There we go. And the same thing on the opposite side. And the reason we're doing that is it's going to make the horn look shiny when we're done. And we want it to look like a shiny ivory color. Now, start doing dots. So the top of his ears, some dots, top of his head, top of his eye, top of his face. So now we, we want to, we're going to cover most of this with dots. We want the total total area covered to be less than we did with the last color. So we get a bit of a muscle there. So I put some dots on that muscle on his face. But I'm going to leave that little space there, the, the stone gray. And I'm going to leave this piece, the black that I started with. And I just keep going on the parts of his face that can catch the light directly. So his cheek. Here is going to catch lots of light directly. This part of his face is a little bit in shadow. So I'll skip that, go down a little bit further, and put dots all over his cheek, bringing out the shape a little bit more. And one of the fun things about this sort of dot approach is that if you make a mistake or you don't like the result, you can always go back a color so if I decided I actually wanted that to be darker still, I could just go back, grab the stone gray, 
and reapply those dots and make the whole thing a little bit darker or make the area that I want it to be darker, just adjust it. I want a little bit of a shadow to extend under his chin. So I'm going to work a little bit further down. Leave a little bit of a gap there where I didn't fill this color in. Right down his chest with the big chest muscles. And the top of this part of his leg. Right up to the top. Like that. And that's probably enough on there. Do the same thing. It's got a big muscle right there. So we'll do the top of that muscle with quite a few little dots. Bring up the shape of the muscle. There's another muscle there. Do the same thing. That muscle. And then along the top of his leg there. He's got this sort of wrist thing going on here on his legs. So we'll make that highlight a little bit bigger because it's wider there. Like this, physically, his leg is wider. And a few down to the towards the knuckle there. Okay, this side of his neck, the light's coming this way, and this is a raised muscle, so we want to make sure we get that. Get the front of it, lots of dots. But then this part back here, it sinks in a little bit, and then it comes out again close to the main. So you want to do some dots on that separately to kind of separate that zone of muscle between this one and that one. And that's going to, even if we were to go back and do dots over all of that, there's going to be a subtle difference between those spaces now. I'm going to define those muscles a little bit. I'm running out of paint. I'm going to mix some more of that 50-50 weathered stone and stone gray mix and keep working my way down. Lots and lots of dots. Lots of dots. Happy dots. So light coming this way. It's going to catch the top of his flank here. Come part way down, but not all the way down to his belly. So we're just going to leave a little halo of that first stone gray that we don't cover with these dots. This muscle at the top of his leg. It's going to catch a lot of light. We'll give that a lot of light colored dots. That part of his back is definitely going to get dots on it. And then down on the front of his leg. And we've got another muscle there, which is separate from the muscle above it. So we'll define that one differently. Define it separately. Just a little bit of a difference between these two, not much. There we go. And we're starting to get the horse's shape defined. Okay, I'm gonna flip them over and do the same thing on the other side. So, some refresher light directions coming this way. So, top of the ears, top of his head, under the eye, that big cheek muscle, down almost to his lip. neck under the mane, and there's these little folds in the coat where his neck is pulled back. Do a little bit of a highlight on those with little dots, not too much, and then we want a little bit of a shadow under his, sorry, drifting, a little bit of a shadow under his chin, but then these big muscles on his legs, these got to be all highlighted. And then same as on the other side, on his neck, 
there's a big muscle there, there's a little depression, and then it comes back out again. It's like a second row of muscle there along the mane. There we go. Big block of muscle there on this left leg, left before leg, I guess that would be. And so we want to go on this front leg. We want to make sure there's dots to make that wrist really visible. A little bit on the knuckle down there. I'm going to reach through and do the top of the foreleg from the other side. And now we're going down the side of his body. Light coming this way is going to catch the flank up here, but not too far down. If you wanted to make him an emaciated horse, at this stage you could mark out his ribs. But we're not going to do that. We don't want him to look emaciated. We want him to look well-fed, healthy, magical. When you're doing your dots, just keep kind of changing the position, changing the angle, rotating the brush. Try not to be systematic, just kind of doodle. Just kind of wiggle the brush, let it drop down, lift it up again, change the pressure, and you'll get a variety of different dots, different shapes, different diameters. But try to like concentrate the average of them in the center of where you want the highlight to be. And then you'll get the dappled look on the highlight where it's starting to come through already looking a bit highlighted. Okay. This is what we're looking for. Okay, we're gonna give that a minute to dry. And while waiting for that to dry, we're gonna do the first um, highlights on the main. First highlights on the main. So, as I said earlier, what I wanna do is have a bit of night sky indigo in the main before I start to highlight it up to a bit of a light gray color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, uh, this indigo is pretty light, so I'm gonna make a 50-50 mix of black and indigo. 50-50 mix of black and indigo. You could use like imperial purple, you could use um, a dark blue, you could use if you use dragon black, dragon black is already indigo, and when you put a bit of white in it, it turns a bit purple or blue anyway. But uh, the solid black um, or the dragon black, you could just add this indigo into it. It's going to work pretty good. And then as I lighten it up, that purple is going to stay there. Um, it's kind of a tint to the color. So we've got the light coming this way. So I'm just going to paint sort of... I'm going to ignore the texture. So like, I'll start back here. It'll be easier. So we've got a big wave of hair here, okay? A bit hard to see on the camera because it's so dark. But this whole wave is going to get painted this color. I'm not going to try to paint individual strands. Same thing with this mass of hair. I'm going to paint the whole thing, but I'm leaving the base right by his neck black. I'm going to leave the tip uh, of the fur a little bit darker as well. So I'm kind of painting the middle section of it, this indigo color. And I'm ignoring the, the, the sculpted fur texture at this stage. We won't paint the fur texture until uh, the second last gray color. That's when we'll start to integrate the individual strands of hair. Up until then, we're basically just painting the, 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 the overall volume of the shape and ignoring the details. So I'm going to do that same thing on this bit of fur on the crest. 
Got like a little forelock going on here. And I'm going to paint the center of his beard this color as well. Same thing on this side. He's got this big forelock. I'm going to paint the middle of this with this color. Leave the tip a little bit, the tip of the hair a bit darker. Same thing up over the top. Most of that the purple, indigo, whatever this color is. And then the same thing all the way down the middle of the mane. All the way down the middle. So I'm leaving a strip of black there and a strip of black out at the tip. I'm painting the middle. And I'm really beating the snot out of this brush today. But that's what the brushes are for. There we go. First bit of purple. I'm do the same thing on the tail. Leave the tips dark. Paint the center of the, the, the masses this purple. And then the other side. Not being very kind to this brush today, as I said. I should probably be using a synthetic to do this so that I'm not wrecking my nice Windsor Newton brush, but too late now. There we go. Got the purple in there. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush for the next series of circles now. So I'm going to leave that to dry and switch back to doing dots. I'm going to go to a size one brush. And now this is just going to be straight uh, weathered stone. Just straight weathered stone. It's not a half step. A little bit of flow improver in there. I'm going to go back and keep doing dots. Lots of dots. Hey, Scott. Nice to hear from you. I hope things are, are good with you. Hope the weather is not uh, too cold out there. I know you guys get some pretty harsh weather in Saskatchewan. All right, I am going to keep doing the, the, the dots now. So weathered stone, go back to the horn. Same thing as before. Um, I don't want the highlight right on the top. I want it just slightly towards me. So I can end up with two highlights in the horn, one visible from each side. And this highlight is smaller fits inside the diameter of the highlight from the previous step. I'm going to do that on both sides. So you can see if you look from above, it's a little bit darker right on the top, gets lighter on the side, then very dark on the bottom. So there we go. There's our weathered stone highlight. And you'll notice I'm not trying to paint like just the, the individual whirls of the, the horn. I'm painting ignoring that texture that's the same thing as i'm doing on the on the fur all right tips of the ears i want to leave the center of the interior of the ears dark but i do want to make sure i get the tips of the ears make them visible against the the mane there we go there we go and i'm trying to make smaller and smaller dots now as we go Only minus 10 there. Good painting weather. Right on. Yeah, it's about minus 12 here today and very dry. Um, drier than it normally is here in Nova Scotia. So things are drying up pretty qu quicker than we're used to today. I'm sure that's kind of the norm for you folks out there. All right, so uh, with the weathered stone, I'm doing uh, smaller dots now. The same highlights as I did before but trying to fill in a smaller space. So for example, on his cheek here, we've got that triangle shape, which is lighter. And I put dots, little tiny dots, inside that highlight. 
put a little bit on the eyelid just to highlight the eyelid but then I'm putting dots small dots inside the previous highlight layers nice tiny little dots so the smaller the dots are the longer it takes so it's up to you how small you want to make the dots how many dots you want to do depends on your mood as well I find that I really enjoy making thousands and thousands of little dots um, but also there's some days where like a little bit today where I have a bit of shoulder pain a bit of neck pain and maybe I don't feel like doing thousands and thousands of dots especially where I have to kind of lean in a strange way to hold on to the um, to the mini in this position so I just did something I meant to explain to you I want to connect across the groups of muscles with this color so that they don't look like they're just like isolated piles of muscle hanging in midair so I can go further in some spots like on the cheek here I can bring the dot the lighter dots down into the darker a little bit and because there's much darker dots in behind even with these lighter dots over top it's going to still appear to be in the shadow a bit but it's not going to we don't want the muscles to look like they're isolated and hanging in midair on their own with no no skin around them so we want to make sure that sort of connect things together and the glaze that we're going to do later on is going to help with that as well as the 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 colored dots we're going to put in uh, in the transition zone transition zone between the highlight and the shadow So again, we've got those two different muscle groups. We're going to highlight those a little bit separately, but we're going to try to uh, close things up between them a little bit too so that the muscles, like I say, don't look like they're hanging out in space. And this is one of the reasons why we have the stone gray on the palette. If it comes out that we've basically connected things too much, we can go and put dark dots back in and separate them out again. So keeping these dots on the raised areas facing towards the light. But generally speaking, making these highlights smaller than the previous stone, uh, the previous mixed color, unless I feel like I need to connect the muscle groups together better. This is an example of that here. Like this, this really is not that deep of a cavity. So we don't want it to be too dark in there but particularly like if you see horse like videos of horses that are um, well groomed and they're running and they start to get sweaty they they look very very shiny um, especially if they've been um, brushed quite a lot and so these do these zones do tend to look quite dark um, depending on the light that the horse is in and what color the horse is the horse is as well so you can have them be quite separated but uh, it's, it really depends on uh, on the light and the color of the horse like I say photo references are always good they're very useful for this I did check a bunch of photo references before I started uh, photos of real horses as well as some paintings of horses but just to uh, avoid you know stealing people's work or whatever I didn't uh, I'm not going to show the photos I used as references I find that uh, if you just you know use your usual thing use your search engine and do something like well I put in uh, scary dappled gray unicorn and I got all kinds of interesting uh, charcoal drawings and sketches and uh, fantasy paintings that people have posted on uh, DeviantArt as well as on Pinterest and a lot of really good uh, interesting ideas for how to make the color scheme look and uh, pretty good way to get some inspiration I didn't look at other people's miniatures I find that the unless you're looking at the work of somebody who's really really knows what they're doing um, you can be misled about uh, what's going to work and what's going to look right um, from looking at the photographs so it's always good to look at uh, 
photos of real animals, real objects, as well as, uh, you know, 2D paintings or oil paintings or whatever by, uh, by skilled artists. And these days, what you want to watch out for in particular is um, 3D renders. Some of the 3D renders are really good and they look very lifelike. But the lighting in all of those is contrived. It's not natural lighting. And if you try to mimic that lighting, uh, especially if it was intended for a video game or something like that, it's not going to look the same if you light it that way on your figure. Um, your figure doesn't have an internal glowing light. You're not using the same um, light properties to, uh, to get your colors. So it can be a bit frustrating to try to emulate the lighting scheme off of a 3D render. So I'd suggest avoiding that. Look at oil paintings, photographs of oil paintings, photographs of real objects that are similar to what you're working on if you can find them. That's going to be really helpful. All right, I like it. We're getting a really nicely defined bunch of muscles and shapes on the horse. Unicorn. Sorry, unicorn. Starmane. Starmane. Ooh, maybe we could do like a, a galaxy cloak effect in his mane. Oh, we could try that. I don't know if that would work or not. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. That might be a bridge too far. Maybe we'll do a, a social media poll and you guys can tell me whether I should do a, 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 a galaxy cloak effect inside the unicorn's mane. We'll see. We'll see what the, what the opinion is of the general participants out there. I've done that sort of effect like in dragon wings and on the bases of I did some zodiac actually it was reapers uh, zodiac minis and I did uh, like constellations and stars fields and that kind of stuff in the bases it looked pretty good but uh, let's see we're not quite an hour in we're not quite halfway through so we might not have time to do something that elaborate in this particular paint along but so I'm just keeping to doing the dots, conscious of where my light source is. I want to make sure that the eyelids are visible. I'm going to give them a little separate line, not just some dots. And then uh, keep going with highlighting the shapes that are going to catch the most light. I'm starting to feel like I really should give him a, a galaxy cloak effect in his uh, in his mane since his name is Star Mane. See how I feel later. I'm gonna bring up these neck muscles. Top of that leg. So one of the fun things about this approach is we don't have to worry about doing beautiful, perfect, smooth blending. We can just put little dots wherever it feels right, like things would be catching the light. And even though technically, right, if you look at a photograph of a dapple gray horse, their belly tends to be light colored. And then they have a zone of gray that has white dots in the zone of gray. So we could give this guy a lighter belly, but I don't feel like it. Not doing it that way today. Oh, okay, right on. I see that uh, Sasquatchus, uh, who's on the the Discord channel, is saying that that's why he wanted to get the metal star main to try to do a galaxy effect in the uh, on star main's main. Makes sense. So I'm going to say that that's one vote for doing a, a galaxy cloak effect on. Uh, Starmane here. Now as you're going, you might feel like you're making the, the zones too light. And if you feel like things are getting to be too light, just wait a minute. Wait for the paint that you're using to dry. 
and as it darkens you may find that it goes dark enough that you're comfortable with it again but if you do find that it's too light and i'm going to do this deliberately in a minute we'll make something too light and then we'll darken it down again with the uh the stone gray that we've got uh, in the palette for that purpose all right so there's the shoulders Elbows. I'm guessing that you uh, you can see the uh, the video clearly now. There, uh, Hugh. If you're painting along, feel free to right on. Feel free to drop some. Uh, some photos in the in the discord i know i'm going pretty fast so it might be hard to keep up but uh, i'd be interested to see how things are going okay so i'm coming down to his flank now remember what we did on the other side the highlight comes down kind of like a saddle and we'll do the same thing on this side we want the highlight to come down on his belly but not too far down we want to cover most of the previous color but not all of it oh right on I'm slow but I'll get there Okay, let's keep going. Dots on the flank. Okay, so I'm gonna go too far down with this color on this side, and then I'll show you what it looks like when we fix, fix it with some darker colored dots. So I've gone too far down there on purpose. And I'm going to go back along the back. Paint's getting dry on my brush. I need to clean it off. Get it back to the paint's flowing smoothly again. Stone gray, or weathered stone is the color I'm using right now. Weathered stone. And there we go. Back to doing dots on the body. that leg nice and visible so you can see on this side I only went down about that far and on this side I went down quite a bit further with that color so what I do I'm working with this color right now this is the color that I covered too much of so I'm gonna go back down two steps back two colors and since my paint is drying out very quickly I'm going to top up my palette with a bit of water basically want the parchment here to be swimming but not with the water on top of the parchment so we'll fix that mistake get rid of it There we go. Okay, now let's keep going. So I went down two steps back to the, the, the color that we started with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to creep. I'm going to put some more dots back in uh, on top of something which is already this color. So that zone right in there is already this color. 
So I'm going to go back over the dots that I just did, and because they're lighter, they're going to lighten up these dots that I'm putting on right now. And the, the net effect of this is going to look something similar to the dots that were the 50-50 mix in the middle. And this is how you can adjust the lighting on the mini as you go. Make the highlights a little bit bigger, make them a little bit smaller. Just by redoing the dots in some areas. And then I've now gone up too far. Okay, I've got that line there compared to this side. So I can go back now to my either the mid-tone or the that half step between the two. The weathered stone, stone gray half step is in here. And put some of the half step back in that zone. Below. Balance it out a bit. There we go. And that's going to look similar to that. Similar, but not identical. And that's okay if the two sides of the horse don't look exactly, or the unicorn don't look exactly the same. Totally okay. Just keep adjusting until you're happy with it. All right, that's how we do the, the adjustments on that. Okay, we're gonna let that dry now. And I'm going to go back to do a little bit more work on the mane. Now, we did a mix of indigo and black on the last step. Now I'm just gonna use straight indigo this is Reaper Night Sky Indigo, not an indigo. It's not a black indigo. It's more of a blue indigo. And I'm going to paint this again in the middle zone of each of these shapes. So, like in this beard, it's going to be a little bit across the center of the beard. Same thing on this forelock. The middle of this shape. Still ignoring the um, the hair texture, okay? I don't want to keep the tips looking quite dark, so I don't want to darken those up too much. So essentially, if you think about that as keeping it black there, black at the tip, and I already put one kind of column of this color down the main, and I put this color smaller in the center of that previous layer. Inside, there we go. I like it. This is what I was hoping for. Do the same thing on the tail. Zone in the middle of indigo. Center of each of these shapes. I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom again because I want the bottom to stay dark colored. All right, now we flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Start with the forelock up there by the horn. And then he's got this one that comes across the top of his head. We'll do that one separately. I've managed to get some white in there on that one, so we'll cover that over with this indigo. There we go. Oh, 
tightening it up as we go. Okay. Same thing on this side. I'm going to do a zone down through the middle. And the same thing on the tail. So how does a galaxy cloak work? Or how does the galaxy cloak effect work? What you want is a very, very dark background to be like the depths of space, the dark of space. So that would be like a black or a blue-black background. And then over that, we glaze uh, magenta, blue, to create like clouds of, of colored gas. Okay. And then on top of that, you put uh, some stars, so you spread out some very, uh, so you would use like, an off-white, like a snow shadow or ghost white. Put a few stars here and there. Glaze different zones again with magenta and blue to create that misty effect. And then go with a lighter color, like ghost white, dragon white, over the top of that. So it gives a sense of like deep space, depth with stars in it, blue and magenta space with stars in it. And then you do finally some very light stars, uh, little galaxy shapes, whatever closer so you get a feeling of like layers and depth it's going to be a challenge to get something like that to work on this main but uh you know we'll give it a try see what happens okay so that was my um uh weathered stone step so now i'm going to go one step lighter which is going to be a half step between weathered stone and creamy ivory and this is going to feel like quite a jump because we're mixing the kind of neutral, slightly warm weathered stone with quite a warm off-white in the form of the ivory. And that's going to raise the value quite a bit and there's a lot more yellow in it. So it's going to really, your brain perceives yellow as closer. So it's going to make these shapes stand up even more. So when we start doing this, for each of these shapes, we really want to, like, I was a little bit more casual about it before, but now I want to be sure that if there's a shape that I want to raise the shape, I want to start in the middle of it and work my way out with the dots so I don't go too far. Um, because the, the effect of the yellow in, in this gray can be quite strong. It can really radically change things. So as usual, I'm going to start with the unicorn horn. And I'm going to do a very thin stripe of this uh, mix in the center of the color that I did last time. And that's going to continue that effect of building up towards the pure white, which is going to be the shape of the, uh, which would make the unicorn horn look shiny. Keep that right in the center and relatively small. Okay. Now we're going to start doing uh, this color on. So actually, this, this is also the color I'm going to use for the whites of the eyes. So I'm going to do that now. We've got his eyes there. We want to basically be looking intensely forward and maybe a little bit down. So the, the, the sclera in that eye is going to be right in the corner so that he looks like he's looking forward. And it needs to be a little bit of an arc. So that's like a U-shaped cup underneath. Um, how do I explain that? There's the eye. And we want it to be looking forward. So when we go to do the white of that eye, okay, so forward is towards my right. We grab this color and we're going to put a little bit of an arc right at the back of the eye. Like that. And even smaller than that if we can manage it. We'd want a horse's eyes has very little white showing. It can sometimes have a little bit 
of a light color showing at the front. But on the miniature of this scale, that could be distracting, make look at its eyes too small. We don't want a human looking eye. Uh, a horse's eye is quite different. But what we will also do is we are going to give a little bit of the um, white reflection dot. And where you can't see both of the eyes at the same time very easily, we don't want to make it so that the, the dots are in the same position on both eyes. We're going to make them opposite. So we look at each eye in isolation. And looking at that eye in isolation, the light source is up here. So the reflection dot is going to point towards the light source. When we look at it from the other side, okay, the, the, that eye is going to be a mirror uh, reverse of what we just did. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to do that now. In fact, I'm going to be in a smaller brush. I'm going to grab my size zero, load it up with that gray and warm white mix. And I'm going to put that at the back of the eye. Let's see if I can get this really well on camera here for you. Zoom right in. Okay. And put that little tiny mark at the back. Just enough for his eyes to be visible. And we'll do that on the other side as well. Basically the same. Just very, very small. There. Okay, just enough for the eye to be visible. And then we're going to do the reflection dots. And these reflection dots, you really want these to be small. So I'm going to get a bit of this uh, solid white. I'm going to put a tiny drop of the flow improver in it. And that's going to slow down the drying time, give me time to get lined up. And the dot that I want to paint is going to be really small. Small as I can get it. You can probably barely even see that dot. It's right. I'll draw a circle around it. The dot is there. Okay, right in the center. So we're talking about a very, very small white dot. And just remember what the position of it's going to be from that, that sketch. So we do a practice dot on the thumb, good to go. No, nope, we got a bit of dried paint on the tip of the brush. We'll clean that off, clean it off on our pants. Don't tell my wife. And then we will reload with this paint. Do another practice dot. Yeah, we're good to go. And then we're gonna do our reflection dot. Basically quite parallel to the position of the horn. Really, really small, fairly high in the eye. There it is. I don't know if that's even visible to you. Uh, maybe just a little bit visible. And we do it on the other side as well. Quite high up. There it is. That one, the first time I did it, it didn't really show up very well, so I did it a couple of times. There we go, now it's really visible. Hope you can see that. Okay, nothing to it. Now we'll go back to doing the rest. Focus back. There we go. Alrighty, so now we're going to grab hold of that same gray color, that mixture of gray and uh, ivory. Generally speaking, not recommended to mix your colors with your best size zero brush, as I just did. A little bit of flow improver in there, not too much. Don't want to thin it with water if I can avoid it. Got my brush loaded up. And now I'm going to start doing more little tiny dots. And like I said before, on this zone, I want to start in the middle of any shape and work my way out so that I don't overdo it. Like the top of this eye, I'll start right in the middle of where the highlight will be and work my way out 
making sure that I don't go too far. And of course, if you do go too far, what do you do? Well, you go back a couple of colors. And darken the dots back down. All right, so this cheek, same idea, start up high here, little tiny dots. Need more paint than that. Start building up that highlight, starting in the center, slowly working my way out. Start in the center of that gel. Same thing down there. Now the risk you run here is making him look a little too gaunt by making the highlights too small. So it's just something to keep in mind that you want him to look healthy, but we want each shape to be well-defined still. A little bit of a balancing act going on on that. What we don't want to do at this stage is start just doing regular, long, smooth brushstroke highlights because you'll cover over a lot of that texture that's been created. And it's not the time for that sort of thing yet. We may choose to do that later, but not really the time right now. Now we're still doing thousands of happy dots. Since I switched to this smaller brush, you can see the dots are much, much smaller. But the, the dot texture underneath is still visible through the dots that I'm putting on now. Middle of the forehead. To those nostrils, I got a great big piece of mold line right there on the middle of his nose. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get that off. Let's give it a try. Where's my tweezers? Uh, there they are. It's hidden around the corner. Okay. So we're going to reach right in there in his nostril. Grab that bit of plastic and tear it off. Mm, not so much. Time for the knife. Taking a knife to the horse's nose. Get a nice sharp blade. Get a little plastic off there. It's one of the downsides of the Bones Minis, unfortunately, is that the cleanup can be a little bit more difficult. Okay, here we go. And we'll just fix that with some little gray dots. Just like it never happened. It's like you never had nostril surgery. There we go. So this time, instead of doing like all the way along his body, I basically have done both sides of the face. And I want to, I'm doing that because I want to try to keep it symmetrical. So I'm going to keep turning him back and forth to make sure that it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. You don't want it to be perfectly symmetrical, but I want this, the lighting between the two sides of the face to be similar. ear and that one and then that part of his ear I think that's mold line in his ear unfortunately there I'm pretty happy with that how that face is coming along looking pretty powerful and now let's work our way down the neck starting in the middle Got this big muscle here. I'm starting in the middle of that muscle and work my way down. And then I'm going to work my way out further depending on how light I want it to be. And just keep in mind your light direction at all times, just above the angle of the horn and directly to his front.
There we go. Now that is a bit narrow, so I'm going to make that a little bit wider. There we go. That's about where I want it. So now I'll do the same thing on the other side of his neck. So it's starting up here above the mane, by his ear, go down the center of the muscle. Now it's easy to go too heavy here and lose all of the dot effect. Let's be cognizant that we're not trying to do like a full thick highlight. We really want to do this with small dots as much as possible. We don't want to lose that dot effect. So keep changing the position of the brush, changing the angle. Work your way down the middle of the muscle. To the top of the shoulder here. And we'll go back and decide, is it wide enough? Does it need to be wider? It looks to me like it needs to be a little bit wider. A bit more light towards the front. A little bit more on that part of the neck there. Now this muscle here is different position from that side. This is going to have more light catching on the top of it. Dot 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 dot. Normally, if I'm doing this in the studio. I do this in time to the music. So if you choose a slow song, you make slow dots. Choose a fast song, make fast dots. Or sing at your own speed, make your own speed of dots. Okay, now I'm going to work my way up this muscle along the main. Kind of down the middle. Okay, so now I've got a feel for how wide I want this particular color to be, how much of the previous highlight I want it to take up. So I'm less concerned now about matching it left to right, as I was not as concerned as I was when I was doing the face. So I'm just going to carry on my previous pattern, which was down the neck, down the body. So I'm back on the right side of the body, go down the neck. that shoulder remember what I was saying earlier if you in case people missed that if you wanted this to look like a fur texture you'd want to be very consistent about the direction of the marks okay and that's going to give the impression of the fur being um, combed or just laying in a particular direction where this is meant to be a beginner paint along i'm not too worried about doing a fur texture pointing in a particular direction really what we're aiming for is to get the general idea of the lighting right just the general idea and i'm quite happy with the way that's coming out so I'll need to mix some more paint. Keeping with tradition and mixing paint with my brush, best brush. There we go. Okay, the hooves are the uh, the leg. It's front right leg. Now 
a few loose dots further down than they should be to create a little bit of an idea of that irregular look. The top of the other leg from this side. So I love it when people ask me questions and want to know what I'm doing and why I'm doing certain things. If you want to know any more about what I'm doing and why, really I encourage you to ask questions. If you think I'm nuts and I'm doing something wrong, you can tell me that too. And we can get in a good old heated discussion about the whys and wherefores and the whos and the whats. <laughs> Not to worry, Saskatchewan, uh, Saskatch, Saskatchewan. Well, that's a hard word to say. I, I, I get that people are uh, are trying to keep up with the painting. So it's always to your advantage to ask a question in that case because uh, I paint slower when I'm talking. So coming down the belly, I want to go about that far down, not much further than that. One way to be on to kind of double check it is to line up your light source. And if you can see dark shadows from your light direction, like I can in there. And in there, you can see the shadow. Okay, you change the orientation of the mini so that you're looking at from the light source and get a sense of what should be in shadow and what shouldn't. You can also look at it from the opposite direction, like that. There's our shadow direction. And if you can see your highlights fully from the shadow side, then you probably need to go back and do uh, to darken some areas up a little bit. I guess I, I both, according to Sasquatcherus, I both speak and paint quickly. So I guess <laughs> asking me questions is not going to help. You'll, uh, you'll lose time keeping up when I'm by typing when I'm still talking and painting. If you are painting along, uh, by all means, uh, let me know if you want a bit of feedback. You're welcome to drop photos uh, of your work into the um, into the chat window on the discord channel not just saying this for your benefit Hugh for um, for the benefit of anybody else who's watching the video later thinks they might want to join in one of these classes later on always happy to uh, to give feedback and take questions as we go and on that note um, just a reminder that there is a a schedule posted, a calendar posted of what mini we're going to be painting and when, so that if you're interested, you can always order the minis well in advance and then uh, be ready to paint along. Or if you're looking at this video later on YouTube, um, you can follow the links below to uh, order the mini from Reaper Miniatures. And uh, oh, look at that, made a big mess. And then uh, paint along at your own speed, pausing the video when you need to, and that sort of thing. You just don't get the advantage of the uh, the live feedback. But you can always get feedback. Uh, you're always welcome to uh, message me through our, the, the Hecatina Facebook page or message me on the uh, Miniature Monthly Discord. I'm always willing to talk with people and uh, give feedback. If you post your stuff on the, the peer, fear, peer feedback channel on the Miniature Monthly Discord, there's lots of people on there who are really good painters uh, who'd be happy to give you feedback. And you can also always uh, 
sign up to take a class. That's one of the big benefits of being in Miniature Monthly is they've got fabulous instructors. I take a class from Aaron Lovejoy every month and it is worth every penny. I learn a ton from Aaron. And, uh, but you know, sometimes people are beginners and they're feeling unsure as to whether they should take a class. Um, get in touch with me. We do beginner classes here in the studio, but also we can do beginner classes online. Uh, we do mentoring classes online of the students all over the world who are working at different levels. And what I do for any student who wants it, we do one class and then I can help you find the right instructor for your level and your interest and help refer you to, uh, the person who's probably going to be the right instructor for you. And I'm very happy to do that for people. Mostly because I get to talk to you still and find out what you're doing and find out about your painting. And I'm always interested to hear about people's painting and what interests them and what they're working on. I'm liking this guy. He's coming out exactly the way I'd hoped. Lots of highlighting, lots of strength in the, looking at the distance, seeing if he's popping the way I want him to. I'm really happy with that. All right, I got to finish doing this side of them and then we can get on to adding some color. Adding some color will be the next step. Just got to keep enough of this mixture going. So I'm going to keep coming down on the back. I did that side. You can kind of see the difference between the two colors there. That's the side that's been done. Look, oh, there are more on the main. That side's done. That side's done. This side is not. Now I gotta get more black paint, fix the mess I just made. That's why I shouldn't be allowed to talk and paint at the same time, making a mess. There we go. Now, get that brush loaded up again. And get the left side of his body finished. And then we're going to start going and put some color in on him. Let's color up on the shoulder. Down his flank here. This part of the horse is called the haunch, if I'm not mistaken. Lots of dots and color up on there, light up on there. For anybody out there who's might be concerned about it, if you, when if people drop their um, their photos in the Discord, I don't record that part. Um, I do the the feedback bit without the video, unless you tell me you don't mind it uh, going out for the rest of the world to this, to see. But we don't uh, put your uh, your paint along attempts out into the into the wild, as it were, unless you. Unless you ask us to. So nobody's going to get embarrassed. You don't need to worry about anything like that. Not that you would be embarrassed anyway. The whole aim here is to give people a chance to improve their foundation level skills, to talk about their painting, to ask questions. And to find that happy Zen place where you can just make thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of little dots and just be happy about it. Dapple Gray. I have to wonder if this was a My Little Pony, what would his name be? Dappleverse? Dapple me, star dapple. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> La -da 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 -da. 
All right, what do I need to do now? Let's think. I think what I want to do... I'm going to make... I'm going to make an experiment. I'm going to make some dots with indigo along just under the arm here to see how that color looks when it's kind of edging its way into the gray a little bit. I kind of like the way that looks. A little bit of purple under the arm there. Do a little bit of purple inside the, what's that called, withers, that zone there. But just adding a little bit of purple dots in there. Where that shadow would be. Just a hint of purple in there. Do the same thing on the other side. The bottom of his arm. Or his foreleg, I guess. This is a very fantasy, fancy looking unicorn, so he's going to be, he'd be right at home in uh, the My Little Pony universe by the time we're done, so don't be surprised when I start painting him pink. And now do a little bit of that purple on the other side, this other leg in there. So one way to add the color in is with dots. The other way is to glaze it in. We're going to do that too. I'm going to glaze some color in here in a second. I'm just getting some dots of purple in there first, indigo. Well, that's just to add a little bit of color. I'm not sure how well that comes through on the camera, but it added some purple on his flank. I like that. And then we're going to do... Hmm. Let's do a little bit of light purple. We're going to do some purple dots. So this is Reaper Amethyst Purple I'm using. And remember, it's about the same value as the, the Stone Gray. So this is darker than most of the horse, right, of the unicorn. So it's going to be about the same value as that zone right in between the, the black that I started with and the, the stone gray highlight. So if we want to add a little bit of that in, that's the zone where we would do it. So I'm going to do that on the muscles on his arms. I'm going to do some of that just in that same zone where our highlights meet the original color that was on the horse. And they don't have to be super precise because we're just adding a hint of color. And because it's the same value, okay, and it's going to be just a few dots, we're not really changing the overall shape that we created with the way that we highlighted. I'm going to put some dots on these tendons, and that'll make the tendons stand out a little bit more. There we go. And then do that down here as well. Dots in the same zone. It's going to be a very colorful unicorn. The key thing is put these dots on top of paint of the same value. So we're creating a little bit of visual interest with color. But again, we're not changing the shape of the horse, of the unicorn's muscles. We're not changing all of that. We're just adding some additional uh, color information. Value is the most important one for establishing the lighting. And now what we're doing by putting this additional color in that zone between highlight and shadow, okay, that's where the, when you look at an object, that's where the colors tend to be most saturated. It's not directly in the highlight, but just off of the highlight, closer to where the shadow is. And then, of course, in the shadow, the color becomes uh, desaturated, less visible as well. So we're just 
adding a little bit of color to make it a little bit more interesting in the zone just uh, between the shadow and the highlight. We did that leg, we can do the inside of the leg on the other side in the same general area. How do I know if two paints are the same value? Well, I put, well, one is I use these particular paints quite a lot, so I'm quite familiar with them. I have a fair sense of how what their values is to start with. And then um, I just put them on the palette and say, okay, and just take a look at them and think to yourself, if this was gray, would it be lighter or darker than this other color? And that'll give you a sense of uh, what the value might be. And then you can just try painting one over the other and uh, make a black and white photo of it. Like, to take out the color, just look at it in terms of black and white and the, the value, and that'll give you a sense of uh, how close they are to each other. There's a very famous painting that was bought here in Canada. It's in the uh, National Gallery in Ottawa. They paid a lot of money for it, and people were very critical for of it because it's just two squares, one blue and one red. It doesn't look like much. But what's amazing about it is if you render it into grayscale, it's completely uniform. It stands out like an alien thing uh, because the way that he's painted it uh, accounts, I don't know how he did it, but it accounts for like the natural lighting around it, the way that these the boards would reflect the light. And... Uh, in grayscale, you cannot see any color, you don't see any variation from the top to the bottom. It's really quite spooky and quite interesting. And it's all done with uh, control of the values, with the, the relative light and dark of the colors. So value quite powerful. It's not the, mo you know, the only thing, but it is a pretty powerful thing for determining what your final particularly what the lighting of your mini is going to look like when you're done. I remember when I was working at the public library on the information desk at the time when somebody asked me to look up that painting for them and they were saying, they were getting ready to do a petition to complain about the fact that they'd spent all the money on this painting. and I was just like, I think it's money well spent. It's very cool. I guess as a painter, maybe we can appreciate the skill it would take, the technical knowledge it would take, the painting ability to produce something like that. It's not small, by the way. This thing is like, uh, I can't remember exactly how big it is, but it might be four meters tall, something like that. It's quite big. It's quite impressive. All right, so put in these. Put in a lot more of these magenta dots than I did originally intended, but I'm liking the way they look. Up against the muscles. I'm gonna put some in under that shoulder blade as well. What was the name I was gonna give this guy? Does anybody remember? I forgot. Dapple Universe, Apple Dapple, Dapple Galaxy, Star Dapple. I don't remember what I was going to call him now. I'm just having fun adding pink dots all over him at this point. Okay, so I better stop doing that before I totally lose track of the what and the why and the how. Okay, so anywhere that there's a shadow meeting the light, I have gone in and just added more dots, more pink dots to add some color. So I'm going to make it the same on both sides, and then we'll go back to the original purpose, which was making that interesting variation of color. And we're going to do the horn, I think, is the next step we need to get into. If you want his cheeks. So a couple of things about these... Uh, these figures from these paint alongs. Uh, one is that there's photos of them on my Facebook page. If you want to see what they look like in detail, if you want to 
of a reference to go back to. And then uh, we're also, they will be at ReaperCon. I will bring all of these to ReaperCon for people to look at. Um, and you'll be welcome to come up and chat with me at ReaperCon about them, ask questions. That's why I intend to bring them. There we go. Oh, if it didn't do the ear, I need to put the pink on the bottom of the ear there. Okay, there we go. Lots of pink. Yeah, 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 exactly. Fire in the sky, I think that's right. And it was, it was, I think you're right on the price. I can't remember if it was 1.2 million or 4 million. It was, uh, I gotta look it up now. Fire in the sky. Canadian National Gallery. No, 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 no. Uh... Ah, there it is. There it is. All right. Since it's the Canadian National Gallery, I don't think anybody's going to mind if I put that on screen. Let's zoom that out so everybody can see how big it is. Zoom. There it is. Uh, screen share. There you go. That's the painting I was talking about. When you look at it in grayscale, it's just astonishing. Anyway, I'm not going to do it for you. I suggest that you look at that up. You can find that at uh, um, National Gallery of Canada. Okay, and uh, and take a look at that yourself. And it's called Voice of Fire by Barnett Newman. Voice of Fire, 1967, acrylic on canvas. Purchased in 1989. Five meters high. Voice of Fire. Suggest you check it out. Always check out cool art. All right, let's go back to our painting now. <laughs> Thanks for that, Scott. I appreciate you remembering that. Now, let's get back into what we were doing. There you go. See, if you ask me questions, you get more time to paint. That's what it's all about. All right, so I really want to put a line of pink in this guy's horn. So I'm going to, or purple. I'm going to put this uh, amethyst purple into the guy's horn as well. So the value of this is somewhere between our darkest color in there so between this gray and there so there should be a zone in here where there's almost exactly the same value i think it's going to be right about there no it's a little bit too low i'm going to put a line of purple anyway i don't care it's making me happy i like it oh my gosh i like it okay do the same thing on the other side of the horn. There we go. I used to love doing this kind of stuff when I worked at the library. I was used to, the people that I used to work with used to laugh because, you know, I was a, Retired Army officer teaching children's programming at the library. I loved it. But uh, I stopped that in favor of doing this miniature painting. So this is kind of a, a throwback to one of my favorite things. Do a little bit of creative color work. You guys would love the colors that my daughter painted that unicorn. just told it from me. Lime green and beautiful teals and that kind of stuff. All right. So I think what I want to do now, we're going to do the horn. So on the horn, the next thing I want to do is a stripe of straight uh, creamy ivory. And this needs to be quite tight. It needs to be very narrow. And we're going to put that in the center of this existing... Uh, my focus seems a bit off. Let's fix that. There we go. This is going to go right through the center of that lightest highlight. And we want to run it parallel to the length of the horn. So especially when you're doing shiny objects, things that are very reflective, 
the shape of the object is going to have a big, is really going to dictate the shape of the highlight. So in this case, we're treating it as a cone. Even though it's a spiral, we're treating it as a cone. And it's going to get a cone-shaped highlight, which is basically a little bit fatter at the base and much finer as you get out towards the tip of the horn. And in my mind, this is going to look a bit like a, a narwhal horn. It's going to be a slightly yellow tint to it when we're done. And then we're going to do the same thing with straight solid white. This is going to be a bit like doing the um, reflection dot in the eyes. This needs to be very, very tight right down the middle of the one that we just did. So even smaller than the last one. The finest line that you can pull off. And that will help with the making it appear to be shiny. But to make sure I get a nice bright white, I'm going to do that line about three times. There we go. Very shiny looking horn. Now we can do the other one. Now that line didn't come out quite as tight as the other one. We're still getting the similar shiny effect that we wanted from it. Okay. Now, what's next? I think I'm going to do some glazing of magenta now. Glazing of magenta. So I'm going to do grab my pale violet here. And I'm going to thin it quite a bit. I'm going to put a little bit of flow improver in it. But quite a bit of water maybe four times as much water as paint. I want it to be very, very, very thin. And I don't want much on the brush. So my plan is I'm going to do a demo on my thumb here so you can see how thick the paint is. There's my target I painted earlier. Okay, and that's how thick the paint is. Just enough to add a hint of color. And where I want to use this, again, I'm looking at the same shadow zone. And the light coming down this way, I just want to put this in the zone between the purple dots and the white. Very, very limited amount of it. So I'll do it on the back of his ear first. I got purple dots under his ear, white dots on the top of his ear. So I'm just like literally a millimeter above the purple dots and the brush strokes pull downwards from the white color into the purple dots and then I'm going to go to the purple dots and pull up a little bit to make sure I don't create any um, coffee stains uh, above the row of dots. Do the same thing on his jowl here, just pull down with this glaze across his cheek above the purple dots and then just tidy it up, make sure there's no sort of coffee stain thing going to happen. Same thing around his nose. Push it in under his nose by his lip. I like it. It's bringing in some really interesting color. And now that I see it drying, I don't like it as much. Hmm. Might be a bit too much pink. That's all right. Can live with it. And do some down along the back of his neck just a bit. I did say he was going to be colorful. Maybe a bit more colorful than I had intended, but that's all right. So by his belly, I'm going to start up by the, the back of his belly here and just pull it down into a line just above the shadow from his belly. 
and then I reach into the belly and pull upward, leaving a very thin glaze on his belly and overlapping dots in that border zone where we put the purple dots. That's going to give him an interesting kind of pink look in that zone. Yep, I'm digging it now. I'm digging it. I like it. Uh, back of the leg, same thing over here by his tail. Back of his leg. And essentially you can think about this as being like giving him a bit of a translucency where the light's kind of passing through him like he's a rainbow or like he's air and there's a rainbow effect where the light has passed through him. So Roy G. Biv, red, orange, indigo, violet. So I'm not sure where this color would fit exactly on the rainbow. Maybe more towards the red side of things. So we're going to put some blue on there for sure too. I'm going to put a little bit of this along the back of his mane, or his body by the mane. And just a little glaze up alongside the, by the mane. There we go. Oh yeah, liking that. He's looking very pink now. Now we do the same thing on the other side. Along the back of the mane, just a little hint of it along there. Now what do you do if you put on too much? If you realize, you get to the end, you're like, oh my god, I turned my majestic pony pink. Well, all you do is you come back in and you reapply some dots in those zones. And then uh, that will obscure the magenta that you've added. And you know what colors to use because they're all still on your palette already. There we go. I like it. Rainbow Unicorn. Starmane. I'm just kind of playing with the glaze now. You don't have to do as much as I do. You can do as much as or as little as you want. You can make your whole mini pink if you want. It's yours. It's your unicorn. You can do whatever you want with it. I put quite light on there. Light on there. I like it. It's not showing up on camera very much. But it will show up, you'll, you'll see it in the photos when we do the final photo of this guy. See how much pink I put in there. And I think I want some blue now. And I think what I'm going to do with the blue, I think we're going to give him a little bit of blue in his eye. It's probably a mistake, but I'm doing it anyway. I'm going to grab some of the indigo violet and some of the surf aqua. You don't have to use surf aqua. You can use whatever color you want. But I'm just going to put a little dash of this on the bottom of his eye like that. Just a little swoop of it, a little bit of color in his eye. Oh, I like it. That wasn't a mistake. That was fun. Same thing on both sides. Add some color in there. And then, right, so now, this uh, Surf Aqua Indigo Mix, I'm going to use that color now as the next highlight color on the main. It's probably a little too light. That's the way I'm going to go. So I'm going to do this in, do a little bit of it in his beard, not too much.
And same as the idea of, that I started with, which is like just kind of in the center of that mass of, of, uh, of hair, just a little bit of this color. I'll do it on the forelock so you can kind of see the idea that I'm working with here. Let's do it on this mass up here. So this is still a very low value color. It's quite a dark color. I'm just doing the outside of any curved shape. And this is a bit like the way the halo effect works, but uh, we're going to go quite a bit lighter on top of this, I've just decided. But anywhere there's an outside curve, we're going to put this color in the center of it. And there. Bear in mind, we want to want to keep the piece closest to his body, quite dark, quite black. We're doing this in the middle of the lighter uh, indigo color that we did earlier. If you want to do the galaxy effect, um, this is this this does not make that um, impossible. It doesn't not really the right colors to use for that. But you could still do the star field effect in the center of this. I'm kind of leaning more towards making it just uh, a light colored unicorn mane now. Yeah, the, the, the color scheme I'm doing on this guy is a lot more random than I, than I than the way I usually think about this. usually have some better sense of where I'm going with the color before I start. But I'm having fun with this. I hope you guys are, if you're painting along, I hope you're having fun too. There. Inside the center of all these swirly shapes. You know, this, this color could lend itself towards a galaxy effect as well. So I think I'll do that too. Do this on the other side. Uh, we did that part of the main, now we do the part of the, um, the tail on this side. Okay, so as you can see, I'm not really concerned about blending. I'm just doing broader brush strokes. I feel like he needs some of this color in his hoofs now. So I'll put this blue, I think, on the fur, kind of just above the hoofs. And maybe we give we put some stars on his feet too. So 
So this color has a value very similar to the shadow color, to the, uh, the it's a little bit lighter than the very first color that I had on the mini when I started, which is pretty much black. So it's just adding a little bit of color. It's not really changing the values too much at the ends of his feet. Which hopefully will mean that we can put some stars on there and they'll, they'll show up. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's see. Let's just see how it goes. All right. Didn't mean I don't know what I'm doing in the sense of I don't know what I'm doing with painting. I just meant I uh, don't have a specific plan for this color scheme from this point forward. We've got the, the highlighting done with the dappling. We've added a bit of color in with some very light glazing and some dappled in colors. And now we're thinking about his, his place in the cosmos and what he looks like. more blue on the on the hoofs there we go kind of like that it's a very blue looking horse so where to go next I think I do want a little bit more aqua in there. So I think just up here on the flank and maybe on the back of his neck there and down in here, we're going to put a glaze of that surf aqua. So I'm going to make a very thin glaze of surf aqua, a little bit of flow improver lots of water and we're going to do a little glaze of that color so there's how thick my paint is no serious thickness to it at all I'm not going to have much on the brush same as before I'm going to do less than I think I would would really need so I'm going to start up between the pink that I did earlier and the parts that are white and just do a little bit of blue pulling down towards his shoulder so I start at the top pull down towards his shoulder with the, the, the glaze and then I'm going to push it in to the edge of his mane and then that's that's the blue that I'm going to put there I'm going to come down along his in a curve along his belly the same way A little bit of a blue glaze that way and I'll come from the other direction the same way park a little bit of blue on his flank there a little bit of blue in there and then I can do the same thing on the other side of his body He's a very colorful dude. All right, come down from behind the ear. And then push it in by the mane. Let me do that down along his body again. And there we go. This way. So this is a bit like taking a very thin felt tip washable marker or something like that and putting it over your drawing. Everything we did before shows through. This just adds a little bit of a tint and it doesn't change the values of what we've got on there. It just adds a hint of color. I don't know 
why, but I just felt like he needed some on his face too. There we go. That's enough. Little hint of blue on our big pink pony here. And again, if you feel like it was too much, you can just do some more dots over the top and it'll pretty much disappear. I'm going to do a little bit of Surf Aqua on the fronts of these hoofs. And what I'm doing is um, putting a little bit of blue on the side and then pulling towards the front where the cleft hoof is so that the blue ends up sitting right at the front of the cleft. And that's going to exaggerate the look of the cleft, make it much more visible which kind of exaggerates how alien this guy is. And I do that on both hoofs. Pull the paint towards the front. And where I'm lifting the brush off is right at the edge of the cleft on his, on his hoof. Like that. It's a magic pony. And do just a little bit of that on the hair above the hoof as well. Because, as I said earlier, when you're looking at horses, the color of the hair just above the hoof tends to be the color of the hoof. There we go. Star mane, star mane. All right, what next, what next? I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a glaze of magenta in his mane. How are we going to do that? Well, I've got my glaze of magenta, and I'm going to start right around the middle of the mane, and I'm going to pull forward with it. So let's say I start right here, and I'm just gently glazing it in, and I'm pulling forward into the black where the main starts. And you might get this, it might um, flow into the recesses a little bit. Wouldn't worry about that too much. You can always go back and put a bit of black in there if you want to separate out the main. But this is going to give us that effect we were talking about earlier for a um, uh, a galaxy cloak sort of effect. So I'm going to do a little bit more pulling forwards from the middle of the mane towards the black. And then I turn from the black and pull forwards towards the magenta. And that means I don't end up with like a big pool of magenta sitting in the main. So this is sitting right in there. I'm going to do that all the way up. Just want to be careful that I don't let it pool. Now after one pass, if you feel like this is not showing up, you can do the same color again and the second time it should show up a bit more. I like it. I'm going to do that on the other side as well. And I think we'll do this um, at the bottom of his tail, too. Now the challenge we're going to run into is how do we put stars on this without it looking really hokey? May not be that easy to, but I think the key is going to be just to make very small white star marks and not too many of them. Yeah, I've got too much paint on my brush. I'm ending up with 
more magenta running into the crevices than I wanted. So I'll just clean the brush off a bit and then use the tip of the brush to lift that magenta back out. Get a bit of thicker paint. Less on the brush, come back and do it again. There we go. Pretty cool. I like it. Now let's do that on the tail as well. And I think I'm going to do that towards the base of the tail. Kind of opposite from what I did at the top. I'm going to pull it down towards the bottom of his tail. Still working with this very, very thin paint. I just need a hint of it really to show up on top of the uh, indigo from earlier. Hopefully that shows up on his camera. And I'm going to flip him over and do the other side of his tail going the other way. That's a little too much paint on the brush. down, work my way up, so just light brush strokes, not a lot of paint on the brush, the paint is not quite as thin as it was when I was glazing earlier, I've added a bit of thicker paint back into it, so it doesn't flow quite as freely, there we go. All right, so then the next thing I want to do, I feel like he's like mostly done now. We're going to do need to put some stars in the main, I guess is the next step. So I'm not going to use the pure white. I'm going to start by doing some with the uh, the off white, the creamy ivory off white. And I really don't want water in this because as soon as you have water and you're not going to get dots, it's going to run. So clean your brush out, make sure you get the water out of your brush. It can be damp, but you don't want it to be wet. You want a brush with a nice fine tip on it. Okay, so you're going to get dots. We'll put the tip of the brush into our paint. We don't want it overloaded. Okay. And then I'm going to start slowly adding a few dots here and there. So I'm going to start up here in this part of the main. So I'm going to start by putting one there. Hopefully you can see how small those dots are. It's one, two, three, Two side by side, make it look a little bit less regular. Two side by side that way, one up there. Not a huge number going on here. And then I'm going to put some further out, but I'm not going to put a lot in the center part in there. I'm just going to Focus them more towards the darker part of the main. Just enough to hint at there being stars there. And then I'm going to come back and I'll do a few little like galaxy shaped ones. 
Okay, so this again, less is going to be more on this, right? So there we go. Just a few like that. I'm going to do some in that. Oh, that one's too big. What do you do if you make a mistake? Live with it, or you can quickly try to wipe it off with another brush. You can paint over it and correct it to get rid of it. That's going to be tough to do. There we go. A few at the front. A few in that bit at the on the forelock that goes over. Oh, I've got dried paint on the tip of the brush. That's no good. I don't know if you can see that. That chunk of paint's got to go. And I'm going to reload and start again. Another way to do this is to lose, uh, to use your liner brush. So it's got a long body that holds a lot of paint. Um, doesn't dry out nearly as quickly. That can be a really useful tool for this. The other thing you can do is um, what a lot of people do for galaxy cloak effect is to uh, use an airbrush or something like that to create random paint spatter and let the randomness be the thing that creates the star field effect, which is cool on a flat surface like a cloak, but it's not going to work on this main. On the main, you need to place the stars deliberately. And uh, you run the risk with the spatter effect of there being too many. The positive part of doing the spattering is that it's going to be very random. It's, I mean, it's dictated by physics and all kinds of different things. But uh, and you know your choices of how you do it, the direction, um, and there's a lot of different ways to do spatter as well. With this. I'm very precise about where they're going to be, but I'm less random. And it's going to look less organic than it would done with spatter on a cloak. But it's just enough to give the impression of some stars. And I'm going to put a few on the bottom of this. I remember I used the off-white, not pure white, to do this. Yeah, toothbrush works really good. The, the key thing is to practice it. Practice the paint consistency. Practice like the, the, the you use a needle, right? Uh, to get that splatter effect. You use a needle and uh, a toothbrush. You can also use a dry brush. Where's a dry brush? I had one right here a minute ago. There we go. So let's do a demo of spatter. It's a good idea. Uh, it's a scotch. You. <laughs> Sorry. Let's zoom in on that thing. We'll get some spatterable paint on the brush. It needs to be fairly wet. Okay, there's my brush with the wet on it. And now I go past the needle. To make the splatter Go onto the surface. And you do want to be quite. Okay, there you go. And you want to practice that. What I also like about it is you get that variety of dot sizes, which is quite cool. You know, it occurs to me that because we're doing this with that warm white color, if we spatter on our horse here, it's not going to show up because we've already got that color on his body. So I'm going to do that to this poor guy. We're going to give him a bit of spatter and see how it looks. We got visitors. Okay, so I'm going to lie him down. And I'm going to fire spatter at his tail. Here we go. Oh, stop moving there, bud. Uh, let's do it like that. I 
as a point you don't want to hit the tail with the actual brush, <laughs> which is what I just did. All right, let's do some on the other side. Reverse them, come from the other way. Let's see how we do. Ah, that was too much. I kind of like it actually. Other than that one big blob, I kind of like it. Let's try some more from this side. I do like the randomness of it. And because it's already present in there, we're not seeing the drops that end up on his body. I like it. I like it. Glad uh, Scott made that comment, or Hugh made the comment about the toothbrush. Inspired me to give that a try. The only thing I can do now is fix the couple of little mistakes that I made. Which are down right there on the back of him. So, first thing I'm going to do is grab a wet brush and I'm going to clean off some of the excess drops that I put on there. Just get rid of them completely. Just wipe them right off. Same thing on the other side. Now these ones are more difficult to deal with because they're quite big. Quite big. This is the plan. So we go back to our... What color was the last one that we used? Was the 50-50 mix, I want to say? And I'm going to put some of these dots over top of the dots that his body that are too bright that I don't like. They've landed in the wrong places. Yeah, I do think that maybe that was a little too random for me. It's ended up in places where I didn't particularly want it to be. And I got a mess on his tail. So, I mean, it's your choice, right? If you want to do it this way, I don't think I would do it this way again. I'm not really liking the way that it, uh, the spatter went a little, little further than I intended. Uh, the way to, to fix that, of course, is to mask, all right? Take an extra moment, put a bit of mask across the area where you don't want it to land, like in the back of his legs in here, that sort of thing. And that will help avoid this situation that I'm in right now, where you find yourself going back, painting over them to get rid of them. There we go. A few too many. I'm happier with that now. Okay, so what we could do is do some glazing. We could glaze magenta back over those and then go back and do just a few. Uh, so we wouldn't do all of it with magenta, maybe just a little bit in a few spots, like in the middle there, maybe some out there on the uh, that forelock. Some of the ones on the tail get a bit of magenta on them. Conceal them a little bit, like like saying before earlier, the the idea is to have um, depth, right? And you get the depth by doing the process multiple times. And then, oh look at that! I've completely ch chipped off the tips of his uh, hooves there. Oh well, put some aqua on there, fix it. I think there we go. So just pushing some of these back into the background. A bit of uh, blue on this side, and again, this is why I didn't use pure white for these. These are the off-white warm white. 
because now what I can do is go back through again and I can use the pure white to put just a few select ones where I really want them to be and they'll be very bright. So grab the pure white, a little bit of flow improver to make sure that they flow and I'm going to put one or two lighter ones and they're going to be larger than the others because they're essentially going to be like stars that are closer if you will and it's okay to make some of these like slightly cross-shaped like they're going through that um, like a polarizing lens that gives them that cross look when you take a photograph of a light. Feeling really saucy, you could do some swirls, like some galaxy shaped swirls. I'm going to do one which is cross-shaped right in there, I think. Oh, on camera. There we go. Right in there. A slightly cross-shaped star there. There can be no doubt that what we're intending is that it should be like a star field. I'll do a few on the other side now. Same as on the other side, pushing some of them back with some blue. Same as I push some of them back with the pink. And then I'm going to come back and do just a few brighter ones. With our pure white. And then we'll call him pretty much done. Except for basing. And I mean, everybody can do their own basing however you want to do it. So we'll do one up there, one there, one there, do one there, do a cross shaped one there, another cross shaped one there, one there. There we go. Stars in his tail, stars in his mane. Multicolored pink, blue, polka dotted uh, unicorn. <laughs> and that, I think, is that. Got a few minutes left. If anybody has any questions they wanted to ask, now is the time. Oh, there's one thing still I could do. One thing still I could do. And this is a much more challenging thing. You don't do this if you don't want to. But uh, the the unicorn horn, the, the, the spiral has gone away. So what I would do is, what I am going to do, is I'm going to get some black. And I'm going to black line the unicorn horn to bring back the... The spiral and this is a bit risky it could go horribly wrong I could end up totally obscuring my shiny highlight that I put on the horn earlier and in which case I would have to go back and rehight highlight the horn all over again from scratch so don't do this unless you're feeling fairly confident in your ability to black line but that is the next uh, logical step to conclude this figure so I'm going to do it and then that'll be it for this guy key is to have the paint quite thin so it runs smoothly gentle brush strokes 
make sure everything is lined up and then very gently paint those lines back in um, if your brush is not flowing well if the paint is starting to dry if your eyes are starting to go, as my eyes are starting to go right now, maybe not the best time to do this. Just take a break, rest your eyes, come back later. Too late for me, I've already done it. And don't forget to do it across the top as well. Oh, sorry, I drifted on you. There we go. It didn't end up being quite as yellow as I thought it would. But it's uh, still pretty yellow. I'm not sure that it shows up too yellow on your screen. Uh, so, panel lining product is the question from uh, the Discord. And uh, so, oil based panel lining products like ones that you would thin with mineral spirits and animals, whatever, they're going to tend to give you a, a dirty, gritty look because the paint spreads as it dries, right? The, the thin surface tension causes it to spread a little bit. So it's going to look dirtier than this. So for something like the unicorn horn, I would just use ink or thin paint and your best sharpest tip brush to do it. And you avoid the risk of creating that bleeding uh, effect that you can get with oil washes. Um, you don't want to have to go back and clean it up with oil, uh, with mineral spirits or something afterwards. So personally, I wouldn't do that. Um, I do like that look, like pin washes and that sort of thing, but not in something that I want to be very, very clean. I like to use, uh, I like to just do it by man, manually. And how, the, uh, how I prepare the paint for it, um, I'm using a tiny bit of flow improver black paint and a drop of black ink. And I don't know if you can see that on the palette. I'm going to switch to view it on the palette. Uh, let's see, palette view, there we go. What I hope you're going to be able to see is when you spread out paint, just regular paint, okay, I'll spread this gray paint. It just sits there, it doesn't move much, okay. But the combination of the flow improver, which reduces, this, which Reduces the surface tension, it makes the paint more mobile, okay? Changes the viscosity, and then the ink tends to bead together in a line. So when I spread the ink, unlike the way this paint operated, this moves quickly. So it's going to pull together into a bead very quickly when you apply the line. So that's why I like to use a little bit of black paint combined with some black ink and a little bit of flow improver to keep it mobile. And it, it just, you can get the finest of black lines. Uh, and the other thing is a very, very fine tip brush, right? So let's look at this very fine tip. Oh, change view back to me actually painting. There we go. I'm gonna do it on my thumb. And you'll be able to see like I can get very, very, very thin lines this way. These are not, my uh, my eyes are starting to go for the day. But you will see, I think, that the lines are very, very consistent. And the flow improver also keeps the paint from drying. So you get a little bit of time to work with it. You can go a little bit slower and uh, the paint will go a long way. So I did all that so far without reloading even once. And this is the technique that I um, use when I'm doing my, all the various tartans and things that we paint. Because it really does let you get consistent, long, thin, smooth lines. And you can be very, very precise with it. I also, um, no, it's not Airbrush Flow Improver. It is Liquitex Flow Aid. Um, but uh, an airbrush flow improver will do the same thing. The key thing is it slows down the, the drying time just a little bit. 
and it uh, uh, changes the viscosity of the paint, so it moves a little bit more easily. You just play with it a little bit, and you'll find that the the combination of things that works for you um, tends not to work as well just with water because you still get the beating uh, the uh, the tide effect. But uh, yeah, I use Liquitex Flow Aid ink and paint. Um, some of the other formulas I've heard was um, people use uh, wash, like a black wash or a steel wash with paint, and that can give you good consistent thin lines. Um, I've heard people have had success using contrast paints. They have a similar kind of beading effect. The downside with the contrast paints is once it touches something, it stains. So if you make a mistake, it's really, really obvious. Whereas with this, um, if you don't have much on the brush, okay, and you go very, very lightly, you don't get much. You can make a very, very thin line that's not very strong. You can barely see that line on my finger. But when I do the same line 10 times, Eventually now you can see that very straight, fine, thin line. So this is more forgiving than doing it with a contrast paint because they're much, much fainter the first few strokes. And if you do, with any of these things, if you try to go heavy all at once, you end up with an inconsistent width to the line. So you're better off to go lightly, control your brush stroke, and do the same brush stroke repeatedly until you have the practice and the brush control to control how thick the line is going to be. The other approach is to paint the left side of the line first and then paint the right side of the line afterwards. And then that lets you, as you can see with this line, I have controlled the width by painting the left side first and the right side, and that's going to give you really good um, consistency in your lines. Okay? Those are great questions. Great. Uh, appreciate that, uh, Sasquatchress. And uh, did anybody else have any questions? I see Zox has posted a few things on there, uh, the link tree for uh, Miniature Monthly. If you're watching this video or listening on this uh, paint along and you're not already uh, part of Miniature Monthly, I just can't recommend it enough. The Discord uh, has a couple of free channels on it. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a channel called All the Peeps and anybody can post in there and chat. And all these paint alongs are free to access on the Discord server for Miniature Monthly. Um, it's a wonderful Patreon that they've got set up there. Wonderful people hundreds of really good videos things to learn from and it's a really supportive painting community so um you know it's free to, to to get access to the discord server worth getting in there meet some people and then you know the patreon is cheap five bucks a month for the first tier ten dollars a month for the uh the second tier which gives you access to two different levels of videos as well as access um for the Ivy League, as they call it, you can get access to one-on-one -on -one mentoring lessons with one of the instructors. So that's Aaron Lovejoy, uh, Matt DiPietro, and uh, Elizabeth uh, Beckley. Taking classes from all three, they're excellent. Love them. Glad to be uh, part of their community. I think that is it. I'm pausing just a little bit to see if there's any messages there from anybody on the Twitch. And... Uh, Everybody painted along. Thanks very much. Glad to have you here. Glad to have people asking questions. Helps keep me motivated to keep the conversation going as we paint. And uh, my first unicorn in many, many years. I'm stoked to have got him painted. All right. Uh, I see Zox is on there. So um, I'm going to stop recording now.